Who is the best to answer that question if not the Ministry of Defence? Our next guest. Rasa Yuknevichen, a Minister of Defence of Lithuania 2008-2012, Member of European Parliament. Rasa, hello. Hello. First question, quite straightforward. NATO, what is it after all? What is the main purpose of the organisation? As it was uh, when it was founded. Yes, I think well, let's start clear. there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. it's, uh, it now is much more clear than it was some um, maybe 10 years ago when right. NATO yeah. was full of illusions that and uh, uh, around NATO, many societies in some countries, uh, they they were discussing about the necessity of NATO, that uh, NATO is um, already uh, uh, coming from the past, that we have, live in new environment, political, geopolitical environment, when Soviet Union collapsed. Because uh, remember, in 1949, when NATO in April was founded, uh, that was... Uh, some kind of uh, uh, interesting, not interesting, but uh, yeah, uh, slogan at that time that why they needed NATO. Uh, uh, Amer no. uh, Americans in on what? Europe, in Europe, Americans in uh, Russia or Soviet Union out, and uh, Nazi Germany down. So that was popular popular saying at that time, but of course it was founded because uh, after World War II it was clear that uh, link uh, Euro Atlantic link is very important. Without Americans, uh, of course, it would be difficult to defeat Nazis, and uh, uh, Europe was in ruins. Part of Europe was occupied by Stalin's Soviet Union. Uh, and uh, Stalin was uh, also engaged, and Soviet Union was not only in their own territory or in occupied territories like we, Baltic states, like Poland, part of uh, part of Germany. They were under direct influence of um, Moscow, Soviet Union, but also in other parts. Look to Latin America. Look to uh, some countries uh, in Africa and elsewhere. China, Russia also was active uh, in in that region, Soviet Union. So uh, communism was uh, was a danger for for very, very many countries, and that's why NATO was founded to, uh, first of all as defense uh, organization. But today uh, we see that uh, the history is somehow back, and the same countries maybe without official. Uh, communist Bolshevism ideology, but exactly the same capitals. They are the same threat to not only neighboring countries, but also to uh, to, to to all democracies. So NATO is more than necessary. Um, of course, NATO has um, some troubles. Uh, NATO is not proportionally have resources uh, in uh, um, on the other side of Atlantic. I mean, the United States and in right. European side. On European side, uh, it is we have to uh, to fulfill those ha gaps. And uh, now we see that Ukraine, despite it is not uh, part of NATO, but is acting like defending NATO, even Obviously. defending NATO countries. Yeah. Well. Um so for NATO to participate in a full-scale war, what should happen? I'm not talking about the Ukraine, actually, right now. But what should happen that NATO will actually step inside the conflict, step in? The NATO soldiers put their foot on the ground, and this ground is at war. What should happen? In NATO history, it was only once when Article 5 uh, was uh, used uh, to as de as uh, to defend one of uh, NATO countries, and it was 2001 when attack came to, uh, attack when when the United States were attacked, uh, this terror attack, and then was the only. 
time for that because NATO is a defensive organization. NATO is an organization formed, organized, and uh, founded to defend uh, those countries they are members of, of NATO. It's for defense their territory. Okay, I And understand. when the United States were, were attacked, so it means that NATO stepped in uh, as an organization, agreed hmm. among themselves, yeah. And uh, and then this um, offensive uh, offensive um, project was launched. Uh, operation was launched outside NATO territory in Afghanistan, uh, but that was uh, for for defense. Okay. Well, let me rephrase my question. I know that you come from Lithuania, of course. I was born and raised in Latvia, so we are from Baltic states. We know what it is to be in the Soviet Union, at least where I remember it. But um, what if Russian army would go for Baltic states, would invade Lithuania, would invade Latvia? Will NATO defend its territory then? Of course. Of course. It is uh, without, if not so, it would be no NATO at all. And uh, it is article, special, special articles. We have defensive plans. There are structures they are discussing and the, the uh, structure who is responsible for what. It doesn't mean that it's, uh, it will happen automatically. Right. Uh, of course, right. politi political level have to make of some course. decisions, to do some decisions. But on the other hand, today, uh, I don't know details because it's not my business to know all classified details today of, of NATO. But uh, it is it is it is um, already organized everything so that also military part of NATO has much more rights uh, and much more ready to act if it's necessary. And uh, this is the, I'm speaking about the concrete plans for defense of our region as well. It mm. means that if attack happens, so everybody have to know from where to where, right. how uh, right. the speed, everything, the, the scale of the operation, who will be involved, what kind of uh, military, military resources will be used, uh, and so on and so on. So this is NATO is planning every day. They are planning uh, and organizing military exercises, how to act if it's necessary. Do you believe if NATO accepts Ukraine right now, let's say tomorrow, do you believe this will stop Putin from doing what he's doing, from the invasions, from the further invasions? First of all, it's not realistic to imagine that uh, Ukraine would be invited or become member of NATO tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessary even to speak about that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can say I can say that it's unfortunately it's it, it, NATO countries members did a lot of mistakes before, especially the biggest mistake was done in two thousand eight in uh, Bucharest summit, NATO summit, when some countries blocked uh, invitation for Ukraine and Georgia mm, for membership right. action plan. Absolutely. And that was the biggest mistake. I think it was a message to Putin uh, uh, that it's some kind of gray zone and you can grab it. So this was the biggest mistake. And of course, I expected more in Vilnius summit. But on the other hand, today, Ukraine is at least very close to, to NATO membership. And today, I don't think it's the... It's not uh, the first need for to, to, to be a member of NATO tomorrow. The first need is to help Ukraine to win this war and really to win this war, to liberate the territory. And it is uh, happening without NATO membership because all countries are doing this, helping this, this except that military personnel or uh, 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 human resources are not mm. used. Well, the reason I've asked, you said that there is no reason to, start, uh, to talk about that Ukraine will be accepted in NATO while the war is on. You are absolutely right. I understand that. But the reason I asked my question is, um, I believe Putin is afraid of NATO, or at least he's concerned that if he uh, touches the ground of alliance, the answer is imminent. And uh, Russia is not ready for that. Do you believe 
that NATO will win in case it needs to carry out the war against Russian Federation. I don't know if Putin today, maybe yes, but um, you know, during my term as Minister of Defense 2008-2012, I was not so sure if Putin uh, mm. at that time uh, was afraid NATO. And I can tell you shortly the story why I think so. Please do. Just after just after an invasion to Georgia, 2008, end of 2008, uh, Russia started heavy militarization and reforms, especially westwards in the western part of Russia, including Kaliningrad region, including northern part of uh, of Russia. And uh, we followed this very carefully, our military intelligence. And uh, at the end of my term, I had several meetings uh, in some other countries, including the United States. And we discussed why Putin is doing this, spending so much money uh, next to our borders, knowing that we are not a threat. I mean, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, or even Poland. We were... Um, almost naked at that time. We had no uh, military, even military exercises were not conducted in our territory because many countries uh, believe that uh, it would provoke, can provoke Putin. So we were uh, uh, totally, totally unready. And uh, uh, we, when we discussed with, with, with our allies, uh, especially Americans, their answer was, uh, evaluation was at that time that Putin is preparing himself to test NATO. At that time, 2010, uh, Yanukovych came to power, came with, of course, Russian support. Mm -hmm. And that was like um, soft power or data power to grab right. Ukraine or to include Ukraine uh, without the war into the orbit or into this empire. You remember uh, Yanukovych refused uh, membership in NATO? I did, right. Uh, right. Weeks, first weeks uh, when he went to Brussels, uh, it was prolonged agreement on Crimea for military installations from Russian side and so on and so on. So Putin was uh, happy and Putin was uh, was sure that Ukraine, Belarus, all other countries will be under the control. Uh, and now, now for him was uh, an, a plan to test NATO and it was very easy to test it because it was, you know, the vulnerable at that time, very vulnerable geography of Baltic countries, especially somewhere in the north of Estonia uh, with Russian population living there or Suvalki corridor as many know what does it mean today. At that time, nobody spoke about that, nobody. So that was very dangerous situation. And if not happened, what happened in Ukraine 2014, I am sure this scenario would be used or could be used. So my answer to your question, if Putin is afraid NATO or not, I think that they very knew very well the status quo or situation in European part of NATO at that time, that NATO was not ready. Neither we, uh, small countries, uh, for, for, for any attack. So today we are much more ready, and thanks, Ukrainians. You, you, they, are, they saved us twice already, first 2014, and then Putin had to change his plans, and uh, he uh, used, I think, uh, I, I say plan B, to uh, annex Crimea and to attack uh, Ukraine. So this plan A to test NATO via us was postponed. And now when, when Putin attacked uh, Ukraine last year, uh, he expected that uh, Ukraine will collapse and then he will stay next to our doors immediately. So what is the biggest challenge, the biggest threat for NATO at the moment, do you think? I mean, Russia is an obvious thing, but any, any necessity to change from inwards, from, from inside, maybe the structure should be changed? Look, as always, as always, life is uh, not, uh, history never ends. That's true. Some people that in my true. country believed when we joined NATO in 2004, I know very many people, they believe that history is over, that now it will be so boring to live in our country. I know even, <laughs> oh, can right. quote even one, 
one person who 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 is was friend of mine, but he was a pol- political expert. He was saying openly, now it will be so boring to live in Lithuania. We will live like Luxembourg without any uh, challenges, you know, or <laughs> or, 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 or or nothing. But uh, but that was wrong, of course. So uh, life is is going forward, and NATO uh, is um, a union of. Uh, defense union of uh, different countries. So uh, threats to the United States is our threats. Threats to the Baltic countries is also threats to, uh, to, to NATO. And all internal problems also are our common problems. Uh, we are following the election campaign in the United States with the uh, many concerns, as, as you do, I think. And uh, the Trust same me. is with, with, with countries like Turkey, which is a member, NATO member, and uh, what's happening in Israel. Everything matters to NATO. Um, China, look, uh, first oh, yeah. time, a few years oh, ago, yes. few years ago, NATO mentioned in the official documents China as a challenge or even as a threat. Uh, for for NATO. So look what's going on in that region. Some countries, democracies like Australia, the late, the New Zealand, other countries, they also united into into one union, very similar maybe as as NATO is. Uh, and Japan, South Korea, despite their tensions in the past, today they are more close and close to each other. So NATO is, uh, yeah, NATO is for for the territory of those to defend those ter- these territories where NATO countries are. But also partnership is for with other democracies very important because this war we are challenging now not only in Ukraine against Ukraine but also Israel. Uh, has now it's uh, it's the same the same roots roots the uh, autocracies are attacking democracy so nato is challenging uh, the same problems russia do you think that autocracies and uh, dictatorships are finally outdated or they will continue to be forever <laughs> i already answered your question history never ends History never uh, we don't ends, know. Right. But it changes. <laughs> I don't, it and, change. and look to our, to our textbooks. Look to our history textbooks. If you okay. will uh, okay. cal- calculate calculate uh, the main dates uh, pupils have to learn in uh, during uh, history lessons, it's about the wars. I read you. It's almost all the time about the wars. It is. So uh, you, it is. You, 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 Europe lived without the war because uh, we we we. Uh, we we have this European Union, and after the World War II, European Union fathers uh, realized uh, that it's better to cooperate than fight. And we many and few generations grew up uh, were raised up uh, during uh, until now in 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 safety in peace. In so peace. many people were challenged, and they were so frightened. What the happening in Ukraine? Because they never expected that so large scale war can happen in European continent. Nobody believes that. And uh, and now and now, of course, uh, we don't know what will happen in in, in nearest future. Uh, and those autocracies are, not, I mean, democracies are not majority globally. That is are true. Are not majority when we well, look at least, uh, into into different countries. Well, uh, maybe this is the the, the reason for uh, the, um, the parts of the world that continues to call itself free, democratic, and somewhat civilized to finally stand for, for, for its right, not just to express the deepest concerns, as the United Nations Security Council likes to do very much, but finally to really stand for rights and for freedom as Ukrainians. Maybe Ukraine is the example for the rest of the free and civilized world. Yeah. Rasa, thank you yes, so Ukraine very much. Did- did a, Ukraine did a lot, really. Slava Ukraine. You, 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 you made uh, um, a really choice for for very many people to understand that uh, history never ends, and we have to be ready. Thank you so very much, Rasa, for your time. It was a great conversation. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck, Slava Ukraine. <laughs>